I am Chosen Architect, and this is All the Mods Volcano Block. Now, last episode, we left off with, well, a few chickens made, but we encountered a problem, one of our first problems, and that was how to get a water chicken. And starting off today, we need to get ourselves a lava chicken, and this one comes with its own uh, challenges, right? We need to actually get this to happen inside of the nether. Now, from what I have done testing-wise, well, some blocks don't work, so hopefully we can figure this out together. Uh, and it doesn't seem like the uh, the delightful dirt actually spawns anything in the, the nether in the particular biome we need, which is the nether wastes. Uh, thankfully, I do have a spot in the nether that uh, is set up to do a little bit more testing, because what I'm going to need to do is place down some torches, place down some more grass, and I want to try and test grass and see if we can get that to go. So the way I've got here is I just fly up, and I have a spot marked right here. It's going to be a little challenging to land, but we should be able to get it. There we go. Um, and uh, what we should be able to do is just start extending on this with the grass that we currently have and try and get this area a little bit larger. And hopefully a chicken will just spawn if we make this platform big enough. That's what I'm hoping. <laughs> I'm hoping for a lava chicken. I'm also going to save this platform here so we can hopefully come back here in the future. Um, and I'm going to have to make sure to light up the area as we go along, but please, please, please love a chicken because I really need one of these. Well, that's not exactly the chicken I was needing, but uh, I will gladly take this chicken. This is a uh, a blaze chicken and I did get it. Yeah, things are spawning now. Oh, perfect. Oh, nice. This is the chicken I needed. The lava chicken. And now we also have ourselves a blaze chicken as well. Uh, and I don't know. I don't think we would need a blaze chicken. So, you know, what? I'm going to leave the blaze chicken here because we can always spawn a blaze chicken, but I cannot make uh, these lava chickens. So I'll keep that in mind. There's also a skill, a bone chicken. We can make that as well uh, straight from a 10, 10, 10. So uh, just the lava one was the other one I needed. And my goodness, look at all the piglins that are everywhere. This is what a farm this would be. Now, I've been doing a lot of these chickens by hand, and I wonder if there's a way I could use the modular routers. I'm about to see. I just had a bad experience with an ender chicken. Uh, there's a weird interaction that um, when you use, like, for example, the snowball or the ender pearl on the chickens, the it actually uses the ender pearl and then uses and then gets clicked onto the chicken using two uh, to do one operation, uh, which is kind of unfortunate. Um, and it also attacks the, uh, the chicken. And then, so the ender chicken, as soon as I, it converted, it just teleported away and, oh, there it is. Uh, but yes, I do want to see if it will allow me to convert. It just managed to get away. Uh, but there we go. We have a tin, 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 ender chicken. This guy just teleported away, which is kind of unfortunate. But I was wondering, I've been doing these all by hand. Could I technically put the items inside the modular router and let the modular router do the work? Probably. So to do this, we're going to click an activator module. I'm going to send it to the up and let's see if it will uh, uh, technically click. We don't want it to punch. We want it to right click the entity, not punch it, but right click it. Um, and it's going to do the entity that's in range and it doesn't need to sneak or anything like that. So we should be able to put that in. And the next chicken that I'm working on, this is kind of cool. If this will actually work, that'd be pretty neat. Uh, the next chicken I'm working on is going to be the blue dye chicken. So lapis, let's convert that into some blue dye. And then it should only take 16 of these, but if I put them in. Is it going to work? Yes, it is. So there we go. Uh, put some speed upgrades in this and uh, this thing is automated. Yeah, just be careful when you go to replace another one. Yeah, because this chicken is a lost cause because it was making it went to make another chicken. So uh, yeah, just make sure it's empty before putting another chicken back on top. And uh, I have the speed upgrades for it, so now it should go incredibly fast. So, chicken, and then I just did the blue dye chicken, so now we're doing a, we're, we're going to use a black chicken. So, black dye. This is pretty cool, because these are going to be making the uh, black uh, dye for us quite easily. Even though, te technically, in this pack, it is pretty, pretty simple. 16 of those. And it's instantly done. I was going to suggest using an auto clicker, which is what I had been using up to this point, because it takes a long time to click these in. But using modular routers, you don't really need to. It happens so fast. Now, I'm getting very close to having all of the chickens, of course, that I want to make and have uh, have the ability to make done. Uh, but I wanted to talk about this one specifically because this is pretty cool. This is the charged Certus. 
Yes, it'll be a chicken that just makes charged Certus Quartz. That's pretty darn cool. This will be probably one of my favorites. Like, I know we have a Certus Quartz one, but the fact that this one is just charged, I just wonder what the story is behind that. Now, at this point, I have done the unthinkable, and I have spent a couple of hours now just crafting every single one of the chickens, getting them inside of a nest. Now, here's where the logistical problems come into play. How do I supply enough seeds to all of these chickens? I, I, I've got to figure that problem out. There's not like a seed chicken or anything. So yeah, major problems to figure out. So to solve this, I want to try using modular routers and try my best uh, to get this set up. Uh, so what I'm going to need is a modular router setup that goes over here. Uh, I was thinking about setting it up in this corner, but I have changed my mind. We are now going to set it up over here. Uh, this is going to be a little bit cleaner, I think. And thankfully, the modular router setup won't be too big, but we do need to hook it in to our applied energistic system. And I'm going to have a modular router that is automatically bone milling and harvesting. That's hopefully what will happen. Uh, but we're also going to need a modular router that is collecting as well. So with this particular setup, it should be able to harvest. Well, it should be able to bone mill and harvest all from the same block. Uh, and we are going to need another one to collect the drops. Actually, instead, we could probably do this where we have ourselves a basic item collector and uh, we can place the item collector. Let's see. This is where the crop will grow. We can place it right here and we should be able to, to lower the range on this to have it nice and small right here within this small little area. Um, and then on top, we can have a drawer. So this uh, basic item collector should be really good for this particular setup. And then we can use a storage bus for this. And uh, we probably want to separate this and have it both seeds and wheat uh, in this particular case. I think that'll be the best option. So a double drawer. Uh, and I don't know if this is going to drop the verdant sprigs. That's another thing. It can, uh, I think it would ha those have to be player drops, but we'll see. Uh, so I guess we'll use a double drawer and we can just void off any excess. So that means we just, we just need to have this added to the back here and hopefully this is going to be enough oh boy yeah because uh i have a feeling i mean it honestly it does it's not going to use a whole lot we're just going to need to be producing roughly i mean roughly two stacks maybe of seeds every 10 seconds so if we can manage that then i think we'll be good but uh we may have to you know increase our production of the modular router systems and thankfully, we could just add more of these uh, for this particular setup to work. Now, for this, we're going to use ourselves an activation module. And we're going to say activate from the front. And we're just going to have it right click as its main action. That is literally all it's going to do. And it's going to use bone mill on this, which we're going to need a hoe to do. So this should be able to bone mill and then also um, click, right click to harvest. And that should be able to collect the seeds right here. I'm hoping. So let's go ahead and put the export bus on here. And then we'll just say bone mill on uh, on the export bus. Of course, we're going to put some speed upgrades in here. And uh, that should be able to handle that, hopefully. And then we're also going to need some speed upgrades for this. Let's do six for right now. I may need more of those. I think we can do up to nine. Can we do another set of three. Okay. So that's max speed upgrades, and we just need to put the seed in. So seed, here we come. Oh boy. And it's growing and it's putting the seeds right inside of this. And hopefully we can maintain that. Oh, and it does drop the verdant sprigs. So that's what I was wondering if it was going to be able to do. And of course, we're going to put the speed upgrades in here. Um, so that means we're going to need a little bit larger of a storage drawer. Now, right here on this uh, drawer, what I have is a storage bus that is uh, able to read how much, uh, how many seeds and stuff we have. And we want to use that uh, to be able to shut this modular router off because I don't want this running always. So once we hit a certain amount of them in there, we're going to use a level emitter for this. Um, so let's go ahead and make a level emitter. And I should be able to tie this in and send a redstone signal to the modular routers to shut it off. 
Uh, hopefully. That's the goal, right? Um, so I think I can do this by taking my cable and just having a cable run down like this and then putting a level emitter on here and I think that will affect this. Um, now, what I'm going to need is seeds, right? And this will be a little bit of logistics here. Emit when levels are above or equal to limit. So that's kind of what we want. We want to emit a signal when the seeds go above the amount we have set here. And let's just say, uh, let's just for right now to test, 100. If it's above 100, it should be emitting a signal. And then this, uh, we want it to shut off. We want it to shut off when there's a signal. So it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be sending anything or doing anything now. But when I go into this and I change this to a thousand, then it should kick back on. Unless my redstone mode is wrong. Let's set it to, I think it's low, right? We'll set it to 100. Unless this actually isn't emitting the redstone signal into the block, which is probably not, the more I look at this. So we're going to end up uh, needing to send this a different way. Yeah, I think this has to go down. So it has to go down one more block because for some reason the level emitter uh, wasn't reacting the way it's supposed to. Uh, and I think my level emitter got eaten. Does this have a storage by chance? No, apparently not. That's interesting. Because for some reason, my level emitter seemed to disappear. Uh, I'm going to grab another one and place it like this. There we go. And now that should work. So we should say seeds go in here and we'll set it to 100. And test. That should shut off. It sh it's no longer running. And then let's test 1,000. And now it will run. So... There we go. We have it set up. So what should happen is if there's less than a thousand worth in storage overall, then uh, it should shut this machine off. Perfect. Um, so now we just need to get some speed upgrades in here. It does speed up on its own, surprisingly. But now we need to take the stuff out of this storage and send it to a modular router system that is going to divide this up between all of these chickens. Now I'm gonna use modular routers as a sort of piping network and this is gonna be kind of interesting. So by default, what I wanna do is I wanna send to this router. So this is gonna send to the buffer and we're gonna have a puller upgrade that is going to be in here. So let's grab a couple of puller upgrades and these can be regular, uh, the regular old fashioned puller upgrades, nothing fancy about them. We're gonna need two of them, one per, because this side is gonna be feeding these two modular routers and this side's gonna be feeding the other side. So this will be pull from right, and this will be pull from left. And this one will go in here, and that, we need to technically define what it's pulling first. That'd probably be a good idea. So we can set this to whitelist and make sure these are both only pulling seats. Uh, that's probably a pretty good idea. I'm glad I uh, made that move. And so this, by default, is going to start sending to this one. Now, we want this to send to this one, right? We want to have these items constantly feeding through this system. So let's go ahead and set a sender module. If I can, for some reason, the sender module is not letting me click on the block. That is very odd. Sender module, there we go. So, okay, maybe it's something to do with the way the stack was set up. There we go. So we have that set. <laughs> and then what we need to do is put that cinder module in here in the first slot. So now we're going to have a constant flow of seeds that are going to be routing to this one, filling these up, and then it'll route to this one and fill up. Uh, we need to do the same thing over here. I'm hoping this has enough range. We might have to put range upgrades. It looks like the base range is 24 blocks. So that should be plenty. So yeah, here we go again. I'm having that weird issue where for some reason it's not linking. There we go. Put that in this one. So that'll start sending them over there. And then we need this one to be linked somehow. Come on. Eventually it will decide to link. <laughs> maybe. There's a, a maybe having TPS issues. I don't know. For some reason. Finally, I got it to connect <laughs> for whatever reason. 
So now it's going to be filling up on this side. So after this point, we're going to be using distribution modules. So I should be able to have up to eight things hooked. But what we're going to do instead is for this particular modular router, I'm going to have eight distribution modules going or I'm going to have a distribution module sending to this side, uh, one for this side, one for this side, one for this side. Uh, and I might actually end up splitting this up, only having three on this one and then having these two on this one. And then the same for the other side using distribution modules, which I'm going to show you how to use here and just now. So each of these distribution modules just need to be linked to these chicken uh, stasis chambers, but it takes a little bit to get to do it. I don't think it matters what side we do it on. We put them on, but there's one distribution and we need to make sure, by the way, that this is set it's set to transfer out of router and also round robin. Uh, and so we can have multiples in here. So this is just going to be for this one. You can see it's going to start sending them. And then we can start working on setting up this side. And as you can see, we're going to have this all routed up. And there's the next distribution card. This, I think, can hold up to eight, though. Eight different things on one distribution card. By the way, I figured out the issue while it, why it doesn't let you select. You can't do the selection while in air. You have to be on the ground in order to do that. For some reason, flight, even if you hold shift, it doesn't care. It does not like that. So there we go. All of this is now routing and you can see all of the items passing through. We're slowly but surely getting chickens uh, to have seeds in their inventory. And that's what they need to get through their first initial buffer phase, which it says is like six or seven minutes. I think it's eight minutes long. So it has this like eight minute like buffer phase that it has to go through and then it'll start producing items. So now I need to start getting all of these items moved over. Also, some speed upgrades would help. And that's where these now blaze rods that we're getting is going to be really great because now I can just make a bunch of speed upgrades um, for all of these machines. Like it doesn't need to be incredibly fast, but we definitely want the puller to be fast and then the, the one that sends to the machines to be faster. So that means this needs to be upgraded to max. This can be upgraded to max. Um, and then... I think that's all we really need. We just need to make sure we're sending the seeds to these pretty quickly. Uh, the rest that distributes, we don't really need to worry about that all that much. Now, I think instead of having these like uh, random cinder modules here, like having an extra cinder module, what I could do instead is just use a distribution module uh, on these two. And that would probably work out a little bit better uh, instead of what I'm using here. So this distribution module will switch that that way it's round robining and then we'll do the same thing on this side and uh, make sure that this is how it's working instead of doing this weird janky thing that I thought was going to be good. But now that I have this going at full speed, I realize it's probably not the best option. We want it. We want everything to round robin so that way everything's evenly distributed. So at this point, there's really only one more thing left to do. It does appear, by the way, some things don't drop feathers. I don't know, like some of them have feathers, some of them don't have feathers, or maybe they just haven't dropped a feather yet, uh, which could could be the case, but this one appears to be not dropping feathers. Either way, we're gonna need to lock all of these drawers up in their current state. Hopefully, we, I mean, we can always add feathers later, um, but the best way to do that is to first get them all connected. And I think what I wanna do is just place a controller right here, and then we are gonna use our uh, configuration card, which should be in here, or linking tool. So we'll grab this, and then we are going to link all of these drawers to this connection. Oh boy, and it looks like it does reach just fine all the way over here. I still don't exactly know what the maximum distance is, but still, the fact that we can hook all of these inventories up to this. Remove drawers from controllers, add. There we go. Looks like we may have accidentally disconnected that. But there we go. So all of them are hooked together and I can lock all of these drawers by simply clicking this once. And now every drawer that was connected is now locked, making this so much easier to hook up. And then we just need a storage interface, like a storage bus. So we can just attach a storage bus directly to this. And this is where we're probably going to start getting into priorities, right? So this storage bus, we need to go into the priorities and it says right here, insertion higher priority first. Uh, and and when it, it means higher in this case, it means higher is in the number. So a priority of one means that this, everything will go into this 
drawer network over the main storage or any other storage or any other storage bus that is defaulted to zero. So that means if we pull something out of these drawers, such as the, uh, the lead, and this lead happens to still have space to put the lead back into the drawer, it will make sure to put it back into this drawer and not put it into any of our other storages. Now, one more thing that is definitely happening is we are running out of bone meal. And of course, I figured that was probably going to happen. Uh, and so what we need to do is create a crafting recipe for bone to be turned into bone meal because we can always get more bones. That is typically the case. So uh, if we just go ahead and set this up, we can go ahead and get three per bone, which doesn't seem bad. We could probably do better later on, but for right now, this is going to be how I'm going to get it done. And then we just need to make sure this goes into a crafter. Uh, and then we're probably going to put some speed upgrades on this crafter because we might need them. Um, so let's go ahead and head up top and make sure we know exactly what we're putting them in. So I'm going to put this inside of here. And I guess it doesn't get speed upgrades, does it? These get speed upgrades, the molecular similars. So um, I don't I don't know if right now we're going to necessarily need speed upgrades, but oh man, or sorry, acceleration upgrades. But I really should put them in there. These will make it craft so fast. And since these are the ones that it can connect to, I might as well get them put in there. Um, and then we are going to need a crafting card. So this crafting card will go inside of one of the upgrade slots uh, down here, connected to our modular router, this exporter. And what this will do is when there is no more bone mill, it will then request the craft. So it says use stock items or craft items while exporting. So we want uh, it to use stocked items and then whenever it doesn't have any more to start crafting them. Uh, so that's exactly what we want. And as you can see, it is doing that process. And uh, whenever we run out of the actual raw bone mill, which later on will probably be producing more bone mill via sieving than we actually use here. But whew, this is the only way I could think of to produce enough seeds to meet the supply uh, or the demand of all of this. This is a lot. Now I need to upgrade my mob farm. That way we can maintain enough of the... Uh, the bone that we're going to need. And so to do that, I'm going to put some efficiency up or not efficiency. I'm going to put some looting upgrades on this. Uh, but I also want to fix another problem. That is going to be our XP. Our XP is kind of ridiculous at this point. And I also want to make sure to push these items into a inventory. So uh, I'm going to use a solidifier here to turn these into jelly babies. So instead of the XP going elsewhere, it's going to go into here and uh, we're going to put a cast in here and this is going to convert the XP into a jelly baby. I know it sounds weird, but it should be a, a more effective way of getting rid of our experience uh, and storing it into physical form instead of our tanks, which are filling up. My goodness. Uh, and we'll do the same for this one. As if we didn't need even more mob drops, you'd be wrong, because we definitely need more mob drops. We always need more mob drops. And uh, so to increase that, I'm going to drop in some looting upgrades, and that should help a little bit with uh, with our looting issue. So that way we can get more bones, as that's really what uh, the main gain will be from this. So this is good news. I'm starting to slowly but surely see backup happening. Uh, in the seed department and that means this will eventually fill up and this will of course stop and toggle back on So I was averaging I did the math and it looked like we were gonna need roughly 52 Seeds per 10 seconds. So every 10 seconds we are going to need 52 seeds in order to supply this entire farm and keep it up and running Of course this thing will stop once all of these drawers are filled to the brim with items, and at least that's until we upgrade the ones that we absolutely need infinite amounts of. So there we go, chickens in a nutshell. And yes, this was quite advanced and I could see there being a pretty big issue early on trying to get into chickens very, uh, very early. You're gonna have a hard time, I think, because of the, the seed requirements, because these do require seeds, whereas like other chicken mods uh, didn't really require seeds to run. This one definitely has a cost of seeds, which is, uh, Quite steep, I would say. Definitely in the steeper department. Now, there's a few chickens that I eventually want to add to this whole list, and they are over here. 
Uh, so we have the unobtainium chicken. Of course, that's going to be something I'm going to want. Uh, there's a modium chicken. I don't know if this was meant to be all the modium chicken, but it's a modium chicken, which doesn't actually give you anything from the looks of it, except for the fact that it's used to mix with a mana still to get vibranium and unobtainium. However, obtaining this is a little bit. It says spawns naturally, but it doesn't say where. Um, so I have no idea, but it can be made from a charged and enderman. So that's kind of, that's kind of cool. I wonder what mod, I guess it's just a chicken that makes this. It says it drops the modium ingot. Um, and I have no idea what that is. Modium ingot. Is this just considered a modium ingot? I don't really know what that is. Is this, but it doesn't show what it actually drops. So if you click use, it shows that it drops nothing. So I would just assume that it drops nothing. Um, maybe that those meant to be all the modium i have no idea uh but yeah there's a, a terra steel chicken of course i do want to get the terra steel it's going to cost 64 terra steel though to make this which is going to be kind of bonkers but at least you have unlimited at that point uh but of course if you're making that much terra steel you're probably unlimited anyways uh the rubber chicken which is kind of meh because we made rubber seeds and of course the mana and electrum which would be really great to make and then of course the vibranium all of these will probably end up making the all the modium type chickens of course, down the road. Unfortunately, they have a texture error uh, similar to this chicken right here, which is the aluminum chicken. As you can see, it doesn't have a, a texture, so it just appears as a missing texture in Minecraft, which, uh, yeah, man, what a what a thing. It's such a weird thing that this, I mean, I guess that's what mess, missing textures look like in a lot of things, to be fair. That's just something I always just associate with, with Minecraft is just this pink and black missing texture file. And with that, my friends, I'm going to have to call this an episode. This has been kind of awesome. We now have way more resources automated than I would have initially thought, especially the mob eggs over here. These are gonna really come in handy. I still need to make these a 10, 10, 10 chicken, but even with them producing very slow like this, oh, it's, it's fantastic. And uh, the fact that we can use these to, for example, make more of the cobble generators and things in the future, instead of just using manual manual buckets. Yeah, this is going to be the way to go. And I am super excited for that. So guys, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Of course, if you did, be sure to click that subscribe button and give this video a huge thumbs up if you haven't already. And of course, comment down below. Oh, uh, what was your, uh, again, last episode, I asked you, what's your favorite chicken? This time, what's your favorite ingot? in Minecraft. I don't know. If you if you answer that question down in the comment, I'll know. I'll know you made it to the end of the video, and I really do appreciate you. Of course, guys, it's now time to thank the amazing supporter of today's episode. And that amazing thanks is going to go to Aceman03. Thank you so much for your amazing support, by the way, over on the Discord. Becoming a Discord premium member in supporting in one of the best ways possible. Now, I don't mention this, but very often, but the reason why Discord is the best way possible is because on their cut, on their share, they only take 10%, which is probably the best in the biz, um, as uh, Patreon takes over 30% in this, and Twitch takes over 50%. So I just wanted to mention that. Of course, YouTube as well, I do believe, takes a percentage. It may not be. I actually could be wrong there. Uh, but there's also a, a member if you want to join. All the perks are the same. Everything's handled the same way, no matter which way you decide to support over on the discord where you do get access to tons of perks such as world downloads and our servers i think we have four modded servers up right now uh yes so i do run some modded servers for you guys to play on which is a lot of fun and we hang out there all the time and i'm also hanging out normally in vc in voice chat quite a bit as well so guys i thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed and of course i'll see you in the next one and as always thanks for watching bye